Welcome back to another fantastic Congress video. Today we're going to be talking about two different types of interpretation of the Constitution. We're going to look at strict and loose constructionists, okay? So start off, think for a second, what do you think a strict constructionist is? Got it? Okay, so a strict constructionist is someone who reads the Constitution almost literally, someone who reads it word for word, that if there's ever a question of whether or not someone can do something, they look to the Constitution, and if the Constitution says they can, then they can do it. If it says they can't, then they can't do it, and that's pretty much how they look at things, okay? It's very black and white, yes or no, okay? Loose constructionists, by contrast, then, are going to have a much more, uh, a much broader interpretation of the Constitution, okay? So they look at the Constitution and they say, well, this is what the founders wrote, but this is what it means now for us living in the 21st century, okay? So loose constructionists have more of like a read between the lines kind of approach, and strict constructionists are very, boom, by the book. OK, so I want you to look over here at this political cartoon. This guy is Samuel Alito. He is one of our Supreme Court justices. And this is a cartoon depicting his confirmation hearing. Remember, the Senate can confirm federal judges. So that's what's happening here. OK, so this little thought bubble is coming from a senator. And he says, so Judge Alito, what you're telling us is that the Constitution must be read only as the framers would have understood it in 1787. And Judge Alito says, oh, right from its inspiring opening words, Senator, we, the propertied white males of an 18th century agrarian settlement scattered along the Atlantic coast. Now, that's not what the first words of the Constitution are. The first words of the Constitution say, we, the people, okay? So I want you to pause me, and I want you to think about what type of constitutional interpretation Samuel Alito might have, okay? So pause me, and we're good. All right, so down to McCulloch v. Maryland. This is a landmark case that we talked about last semester. So McCulloch v. Maryland is a great example of one of these two types of constructionism, okay? So I want you to think about that, and then I want you to pause me and type three things, try to type three things that you remember from this case, okay? If you can't get all of them, that's okay. All right, so now we want to look here at different constitutional powers. So according to the Constitution, Congress has expressed powers, okay? And these are things that are literally written in the Constitution. They're expressed. They're there in black and white, okay? Or black and faded white parchment, okay? So sometimes these are called enumerated powers. And that word enumerated, we've talked about before, enumerated means numbered. So if they are numbered in the Constitution, that means they're also written or expressed, okay? And these, again, are powers directly stated. Implied powers are powers that are not stated, but we can kind of figure out that Congress needs them. And we talked about implied powers with um, the McCulloch v. Maryland landmark case. And the source of congressional powers, how do we know what Congress can do and what they can't do, can be found in the Necessary and Proper Clause and also in Article 1, Section 8. Okay, so in our next video, we're going to look at all the different things that Congress can do. But I want you to know that the Necessary and Proper Clause is found at the end of Article 1, Section 8. It's Clause 18. We also know it as the Elastic Clause because what does it do? It stretches the power of Congress. It gives Congress the power to make any law they think is necessary and proper, which increases their power. So I'm going to stop there. If you guys have any questions, let me